Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning into another encaustic tutorial video. This is an assemblage piece, and I've been wanting to do an assemblage for a long time. It's something I've definitely been thinking about, and, and it's just honestly been really intimidating for me to even think about giving it a shot. Because um, I scroll Pinterest a lot to get ideas and inspiration, and a lot of the assemblage pieces that I see there are just phenomenal so amazing and I knew that especially my first attempt was not going to look anything like that but I wanted to to kind of jump in I guess and start to kind of creatively think in a different way to look at some of the things I have in my studio that I usually use in certain ways but maybe look at different ways I could have using it and so that's why I settled on starting off with this base this is just a a 9 by 14 wood board and it's it's something that I would use as a, a painting a substrate for painting but what I did is I flipped it over and I'm using this as almost kind of a frame for the entire piece and I have once I decided to do that I kind of got a basic idea of what it was going to look like and what I was going to kind of use to construct it though I did do some kind of on-the-fly stuff throughout the piece. So this is mulberry paper that I'm I want to have rough edges so I'm ripping all of the edges to kind of get that that uh kind of rough um unfinished edge and I'm ripping it so that each paper is kind of a different size in descending order so that you can see each piece at least a little bit because I'm going to be stacking them on top of each other. So here I finished ripping all five pieces. I'm adding a layer of black to the base so that I don't have to paint it and so I don't have to worry about all the layers that are coming next because I, I'm not sure exactly what's going to come after this and so I wanted to make sure that I'm ready for whatever I decide to do. So now I'm soaking my mulberry paper in just the excess wax that I have on my griddle. And I love what the wax does to the paper because it, it makes it darker, but also I have a lot of different colors on my palette there from, from my tins and spillage and stuff. So you get some interesting effects that happen when you use your paper to soak up all those extra elements. So I'm still not quite sure what my next step is going to be at this point. Um, so I'm just working on different ways of adhering the paper because I know I want to stack them on top of each other. So I tried soaking it with the wax and then I was like, I'll try this gel medium. And then when I was looking for things to actually weigh the pieces of paper down so that the gel medium would stick, I found these old kind of experiments that I had tried years ago these are Tim Holtz um, wooden, kind of wooden shadow boxes. And I've had them for a while because I, I'm a big scrapbooker and I love to collect. Tim Holtz is one of my favorite um, embellish, embellishments brands. So I, 
I had these in my stash and I tried to do something in caustic with them, but it didn't end up working out the way I wanted to. So I saw it um, in kind of my unfinished pieces stash and was like, that would be perfect to add to my assemblage. I'll, uh, I'll add it on top of the paper. And because I nailed it, nailed it into it, it's very secure and all the paper is is secure and I didn't end up having to worry about the gel medium or how well it was sticking. Now I know as part of my assemblage, I'm going to be adding some elements at the top and the bottom of this box once I'm finished with the, the center, the center piece. But, um, so that's why I'm poking these holes. I wanted to do it before I got too far along and, and forgot, or it was too hard. I didn't want it to be too hard to add it later on. So I decided to add them here to make sure I didn't forget. Now using two colors in here, I I love how they mix together when I use my heat gun because I I don't have to do it completely so that they're completely mixed together and form a whole nother color. I get a little bit of a marbleizing effect that happens and I think it really adds a lot of depth. Now, if you're ever adhering elements like this to the surface, the very surface of your paintings, I found that this this helps me a lot. These are these gears are made of paper clay, and so they're very absorbent for the wax even after they're painted. And I warmed up the surface of where I was going to be putting them, and then I immediately started dipping them in the wax. And I wasn't as worried about it here uh, about getting a good fuse because I knew I was going to be adding wax on top of it. But um, when I've done this on the surface of my paintings, it's it's really helped because when you dip the element in the wax, it, it heats up and, and you have melted wax on it and then you add it to the warm surface. You can fuse it a little bit, but it really helps to, to get a, a good fuse without having to do much with your heat gun. You have to be fast though. Now this part was really fun too. I have these molds, the gear mold, but then I also have a pipe mold. And that one, it's really fun to kind of combine those. I love steampunk stuff and and making these messy gears, these rusty pipes, and kind of aging and adding a vintage look to this piece. It was really fun.
I love watching the wax as it cools. It's it's fun to see it it change color. So the gears and the pipes before this that I embedded in the wax were paper clay because I wanted something really absorbent. But these pieces I'm going to be adding to the edges of my box. So they're not going to be dipped in wax. And for this, I wanted something a little bit more solid because the paper clay can be kind of brittle because it's so porous. Um, so this is actually air dry modeling clay. And I honestly, I don't know if it's compatible with encaustic. I don't think it's very porous. You can honestly embed pretty much anything in the wax, but you need to be aware of like how compatible it is with encaustic and things to to best be able to utilize it. I may do an experiment where I see how how well it takes to the wax and uh, how well I'm able to use it in a piece or something. But for right now, I'm not too worried about that because I'm just using it on the edges. And I have to apologize. Um, the next couple clips, I kept them in the video because um, I wanted to show you how I was kind of adding these pieces to the edges. But for some reason, my camera focused more on my hands than on the piece itself. And so the piece looks kind of fuzzy. And I, there wasn't a way for me to go back and re-record it. So I, I kept it in there so you could see, because you can still kind of see it, but it's just so fuzzy. I apologize. So this is another aspect of painting that I need to get a little bit better at, kind of rusting up these gears and these pipes. I mean, I don't think I did too terrible, but it's definitely not as realistic as I think it should be or could be. Um, I need to probably watch, go binge watch a bunch of diorama videos because those artists really know how to make things look realistic. I did use um, some rust effects paste from Primo Marketing which I really like because they're, uh, uh, some of the pastes are very gritty and I think it adds this really cool like look of corrosion um, and being able to put it in the right areas uh, definitely ups the kind of wow factor. Now this is a metal jewelry finding. I think it's uh, used for earrings. And I'm 
I'm using this to attach uh, my gears to the top and the bottom of the box. And I'm using just a little gel medium, although I probably honestly don't need to because the hole is not big enough. It's really tight and pulling it through was, was kind of tough. But um, I, I always like to glue things down just to make sure that, it, that that tightness and that good seal lasts for a long time. Now, besides adding the gears to the top and the bottom, this is kind of my finishing touch. I, I wanted to add just a little bit more wax elements to this piece. So I decided to see if I could replicate like dripping water kind of on the edges. So I, I worked on piling up, getting a good pile of wax just there at the top, and then letting it cool just a little bit and hitting it with my heat gun, just for a second or two, taking it away, then hitting it for another second or two, maybe two or three times, and seeing how it would drip. Here you can see I'm trying to heat the outside of the box to see if I can melt the wax on the inside, but that didn't work. All I did was make the, the wood smoke. So I had to heat it from the, from the inside. I was trying that to see if I could melt it without moving it around too much or making it splash, but I didn't need to worry. It, it worked really well getting those drips. You know, it's funny, um, it was after this that I realized I was adding the drips upside down because of the way that the faucet heads are arranged on here. There's de a definite up and down to this piece. So I had to turn it around and do it in the other direction too to make sure that it didn't look like it was upside down. So there's drips all over the sides going in both directions if you look closely enough you probably be able to tell that The only other thing I did to this was um, adding some drips at the top and the bottom uh, just to make it look like there were some drips from the ceiling to the floor of the box. It is pretty nice how uh, wax kind of always looks like wet water, even when it's cool. So having it kind of soak into the wood a little bit gives the impression that the wood is wet and that the, these drops have kind of just fallen.
Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate all your support. Um, I hope you found it interesting to watch and fun to maybe kind of replicate some of the techniques. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.